Welcome to Metal Forge Reviews, where you can get the most out of your metal releases. Today's music isn't quite metal. When it comes to all things post-rock and electronic-inspired music, I'm always eager to talk about these subgenres. New York-based Genghis Tron is back after a 10-year hiatus. Their March 26th release, Dream Weapon, was put out by Relapse Records. Keyboardist Michael Skongski described the album as being, quote, more meditative, hypnotic, and maybe psychedelic. Given the band's history of whatever they were doing musically prior to the hiatus, I don't know what you want to call that, I wasn't expecting really much from this band. What they delivered, though, is a 45-minute long, multi-layered musical experience with incredibly focused drum grooves, wandering synthesizers, and chugging guitar riffs that are perfectly dialed in to a gritty tone. So what exactly is this album? Let me talk about some of the things that I discovered while listening to it, and hopefully it will help you determine whether you want to have a listen. We do videos like this, but we're branching out too. We have music videos, top lists, band camp spotlights, and we're trying out monthly giveaways as well. Be sure to check out our other segments. I don't know how else to put it other than this album creates its own atmosphere as you are carried along throughout the tracks. Most albums you listen to in the band establishes their atmosphere in the first two or three tracks and boom, there it is. It doesn't change. It's a static entity. It's a static atmosphere. It's like a wall that's built up and you're trapped in those four corners throughout the duration of the listen. The atmosphere on Dream Weapon, however, is sincerely dreamlike. It is ever expanding, begging you to journey along with it. And you know what else this album begs for? Repeat listens. I love getting lost in this record, so I'm giving the atmosphere a perfect score, five out of five. The artwork on this record really sets the listener up in terms of what they're about to get into. It's almost as if you're expected to ascend the ladder that is portrayed on the main album art. And take a look at this vinyl package. It's very nice looking colored vinyl. And I love the back panel of the uh, album sleeve. It's almost as if it's a macro view of the front main album art, which is really neat. In their music videos, which I've been playing throughout this uh, review for their singles, Dream Weapon and Pyro Scene are about what you'd expect. Dream Weapon has some live action elements, but it's very jarring and cyberpunk inspired, so it's pretty neat. And Pyro Scenes basically could just kind of like a visualizer thing. It's re all really ties in very nicely. The artwork and themes fit this release like a long sword into a scabbard, so I'm giving it a four out of five in this area. There is some brilliant songwriting on this album. They know how to build up the parts and raise the tension. They're utilizing these bass layers in the music and building upon those melodies or riffs. This album is very driven by the grooves and the patterns that are established by their drummer, which I read is one of the first times that they've used a live drummer, which is a really cool take. His patterns are often accompanied by a complex guitar rhythm or a synth part are, and these songs just layer on top of each other and then kind of dismantle and build tension as they go along. It's really brilliant. These sections are always morphing and changing before your very eyes. No two parts are ever really exactly the same and that helps to add to the ever-changing atmosphere. I can see a wide range of inspirations and influences on this record. More classic stuff like Joy Division and The Police, uh, some electronic and cinematic material like Perturbator and John Carpenter, and also heavier post rock bands like If These Trees Could Talk and Russian Circles. The composition is utterly flawless. I have to give it a perfect score, 5 out of 5. This is very cool to know that it was locally produced up in Salem, Massachusetts at God City Music. Kurt Ballou, the longtime Converge guitarist, had his hands on this as the audio engineer. They took very great care to be very precise because it's very easy for synths to get lost with overlapping frequencies and such, but everything here is really mixed quite perfectly. I love the contrast of the analog drums to the synths. I, it's just so cool. 
cool. You have a very roomy analog drum sound, and then you have like these electronic classic Moog synthesizer sounds, also with some like the classic FL Studio and TR-808 sounds going. It's really cool stuff. The guitar tone is really worth noting here too for all my fellow pluckers and pickers here. The distortion is dialed in just enough for the sections to feel about as heavy as the music really deserves. I'm really shocked at the maturity behind the decisions that were made to put a lot of emphasis and focus on the live drumming and how it's being matched by the synths. I love the production on this. It's amazing. Another five out of five. So time to get to the community feedback. As of right now, it is April 6, 9.37 a.m. Eastern. I asked, are you into the latest Genghis Tron? We had 53 votes on our poll. 26%, yes, what a surprise. 28%, no garbage. And 45% said, who the heck is that? We also had a couple comments. David said, I mean, it's not garbage, but I'm not into it. Not at all like the other records. I have to say, I'm not familiar with their other records. And if I was, I probably wouldn't like them. I'm not really into that Nintendo core or math metal kind of thing. I'm not really into that, so. Uh, Tear said, I don't like them, so I don't care. Dashy said, I'm not really a fan of the album. It felt boring to me. Okay, so uh, take these things into consideration. This does not weigh into the score, but we want you to be exposed to other opinions, though. So obviously, this album seems kind of hit or miss between the people that are aware of the band, and a lot of people aren't aware of them. So I'm hoping that this might intrigue you a bit in this video. This is not at all what I expected from this band. As I just said, I'm, I, I'm not really into their older music. The never of the few songs that I heard, I was like, okay, this isn't really my thing. I consider this like a post-rock electronic album, very strong one. And there have been a few this year with Mogwai and God as an Astronaut, but they haven't captured me with such absolution as, as this record really did. In adding up our scores today, we give Genghis Tron's Dream Weapon a score of 4.8 out of five neural net processors. I'm gonna make an executive decision here and just go ahead and bump that right up to five. Thank you very much. This is a stunning album. Easily album of the year material in this subgenre. If you like your post-rock songs to be percussion driven and interwoven with incredible synth and guitar parts, you're in for a treat. Hell, you don't even have to like post-rock to enjoy this album. This is a super accessible record that really should be heard by everyone. Thank you for sticking around. Be sure to leave your comments down below Below us or leave your poll uh, decision in there as well. Go with the gods, Forge Mates. Take care. We'll see you around.